is Letty Conrad. Um, she's the online product manager for Sage. Um, she's going to give us something of an overview of the current state of discovery, um, as well as share some of the experimental approaches Sage has taken toward discovery, how they assess their impact, and then apply them to existing products. Thank you. You need to go to slideshow you know get better. Yeah. yeah. Slideshow. You probably don't want to use timing. I don't know why that's a little bit. use prevent feature. Just fine. All right. Good morning. I was originally going to. Um, have the pleasure of framing our conversation and providing a foundation for my esteemed co-presenters who would be giving you great examples of what their organizations are doing for discovery. But Dr. Rainey actually did a much better job than I could ever hope to. Um, I think a lot of the things that he outlined as far as the information ecosystem um, really is a fantastic frame. So I'm going to take um, some of the really broad, um, data-rich perspectives that he started us out with today and give um, a little bit more of a specific um, spin as far as what that means for all of us in the room and all of the um, sectors of the value chain in scholarly publishing. So forgive me if this sounds a little basic, but we're going to start with the beginning. Some basics of our conversation, we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to optimize discovery in today's world of online research why we should care, why is it such a big deal, and what are some basic things that we can do in reaction. So I'm going to start with presenting you all with a working definition. Discoverability is scholars' capacity to locate relevant content as needed to advance their research at appropriate points in their workflow. Okay, it's a lot of words. I'm going to zone in on a few that are really important. Let's hone in on the first, which is relevant. This may seem really obvious, but it poses some basic challenges in both understanding our readers and revealing the semantics behind our content. It must be when it's needed, not when we, where we, how we feel a manuscript or a given product is appropriately disseminated or found. Those multiple channels, um, all of those um, opportunities for uh, many screens, um, we need to make sure that we're there, clearly. And finally, fitting in the workflow, the channels for information dissemination have exploded, and we have established this in for those who have been to SSP annual meetings um, many years in a row. This has been well established for this group. So why is this such a big deal? Simply put, the information, the internet has changed the way we share information, the way we communicate, the way we do work. Research by many venues, including Pew, Project Information Literacy, and others, have documented the issue of information overload. Students of all kinds, faculty, all of us in this room, are a little frustrated, sometimes confused, by the range of resources that are out there. Where do we find what we really need? How do we then use it? We find ourselves distracted. All these blinking screens that we rely on so much, they create a lot of distraction. Dr. Rainey did a much better, more dynamic, very exciting job of making that clear. Students specifically have a very different approach to the library. We're finding, um, again, information the Project Information Literacy research from last fall. I recommend you all check it out if you haven't already, October 2011. They documented how students are congregating in libraries to do their research, to study, to meet, to collaborate, um, but they're very often not entering the stacks. They're very often not consulting librarians. 39% of the Folks polled last fall noted that they were using library services, um, printers, um, tables, chairs, computers, um, but only 11% were using either library books or scholarly databases. Don't get too depressed. Don't kill yourselves yet. <laughs> There's hope. <laughs> Google and Wikipedia, obviously, for all of us, um, but especially for those that we serve, the patrons, the students, the researchers that we're trying to reach. 
um, 82 plus percent um, are using Google predominantly uh, for their work. Sage's own research has found that Google Scholar is a, is a favorite among PhD candidates. And Wikipedia is huge. Despite our chagrin, 69% uh, project information literacy found 69% are using Wikipedia to begin their research. So it's a reality check, something we have to deal with. In academic publishing, we have to realize the library market usage is king for library budget decisions. And usage is made possible by researchers actually finding what they want. And remember, when it's relevant, as it's needed, in their workflows. So what do we do about it? For the scholarly community, their new patterns of researcher behavior mean that we have two spheres to attend to. In the open web, mainstream search engines are only the beginning. Wikipedia and social sites can drive traffic to our products, and it's a real opportunity for us to get creative about inbound link building. Quality indexing means that data needs to be open, needs to be discoverable by robots and humans alike, and that means that content needs to be more open than we're traditionally used to. Semantics have exploded, and uh, we have new opportunities, new challenges, new skills to learn as far as revealing the meaning behind our content. We need equally sophisticated strategies for the institutional library ecosystem. We must be masters of our own metadata. And that's a little uncomfortable. We have to revise systems. We have to learn new tricks. Um, and that goes for all of us, every one of the members of the value chain in scholarly publishing, publishers, librarians, vendors alike. Some very simple technologies pose some opportunities, like widgets publishers can provide to librarians, um, to faculty, to authors. They can post on their own sites, virtual learning environments, uh, research guides, etc. That'll help drive students to the vetted resources that we're trying to, to disseminate. Publishers and vendors can partner in new ways with institutions on training uh, to make information literacy a joint event. And for both the open web and library uh, institutional discovery, the build it and they will come myth is over. If any of you are clinging to it, please take a deep breath and get over it. <laughs> <laughs> we have to plan for iterative, regular improvements to our products made possible by good quality data. That means ergonomically assessing the value of our products and adjusting those products so they fit the user's needs. That's going to be different for every product, obviously. What's going to fit a younger undergraduate um, won't fit necessarily a faculty member's behavior. But if we pay attention, perform usability testing, and react to those things, the products that are easy and fit in, those, in the workflows of the existing scholars, they will come back for more. So with all of this in mind, SAGE recently sponsored some research and published a white paper. Um, we were asking what the community is saying and what the community is doing about discoverability. And the results of this white paper that I mentioned, um, if any of you want access to it, just let me know. Um, we had three distinguished authors. We had two librarians, Mary Somerville, university librarian, professor, and library director at University of Colorado Denver. Barbara Shader, I know you can't read all of that, <laughs> just bear with me, have to give them kudos, give them props, I'm a publisher, must drive the citations. Barbara Shader um, is Associate University Librarian for Collections and Scholarly Communication at University of California, Riverside, along with a leader in the vendor community, John Sack, founding director at Highwire Press. The research focused on a few key items. The purpose was to investigate what are the best practices for access and discovery of content in libraries. We wanted to know what the challenges are that publishers, vendors, and libraries need to solve together. We wanted to know what are some real solutions and opportunities for librarians and publishers specifically that they can partner with. And finally, we wanted to create some basic observations and recommendations for improving discovery and visibility. So the main method of this research began with a number of interviews with stakeholders across the community, scholarly publishers, published authors, search engine developers, software providers, database creators, a &I folks, ERM, ILS, FYI, <laughs> and of course, the leaders in the library community, the folks, the librarians who actually advanced institutional discovery every day through their work. 
Again, it's my duty as a publisher. I must note that we also consulted, the authors consulted, literature on these topics, specifically around the game-changing introduction a few years ago of discovery services, the pre-indexed discovery services. Um, we read reviews on and commentary about those services, and um, I realize you can't read this, but again, it's my job to drive citations. One of the key findings of our research is that, again, this may be overstating the obvious, but really important that we come to grips with the fact that we have a great symbiotic ecosystem in the scholarly community, but it's disrupted. We have librarians who manage systems for institutional collection, dissemination, retrieval of the scholarly material. We have publishers who produce, promote, disseminate authors' work through formats made findable on the open web and through library catalogs. We have library vendors who connect publishers' digital content in the OPACs and through ERMs and web scale discovery services now. And we have publisher technology vendors who supply publishing platforms, software solutions, and a lot of discovery um, counseling and advice and basic SEO as well as library discovery services come from those vendors. We found that many of the experts that were interviewed, um, the authors reported that um, dis quality discovery, improved discovery, requires some basic things. It requires initiating conversations across the sectors to talk about strategies and pair up on those strategies. It requires discovery tools that are made available in familiar web environments. It requires rich, detailed indexing of highly relevant material for precise search results. It requires a seamless identification, single sign-on, if you will, for barrier-free user experiences. Simple, right? No big deal. So as far as some of these conversations that I mentioned, the research um, really drove those recommendations that I mentioned were one of the primary purposes of this work, and the authors recommended a handful of conversation starters. A little like speed dating, perhaps. We need to talk about what the best practices might be for design of online product interfaces, functionality, and the data feeds across the, uh, the ecosystem. We need to talk more about public standards for both the metadata surrounding publications as well as the data in the, and the content itself. We need to talk more about understanding researcher behavior and user needs. And we need to talk more about new ways to do business together to, the, to serve our users in the best possible way. I'm pleased to report that there are a handful of these conversations already underway. For example, i got to get a shout out to the ODI. NISO convened a working group late last year. We launched uh, things at the beginning of this year. We aim to define standards or best practices for the new generation of library discovery services that are based on indexed search. This is huge. Keep an ear to the ground. There's going to be great things coming out of this group. There's a handful of standard movements already underway. Um, ORCID, JATS, I don't think I need to define these things for you, but it's important to understand that these cross-sector conversations are happening in the standards movements. There's been some great um, research that has followed the white paper. OCLC, for example, in January 2012 reports um, they have a, a, nice, a nice quote, so bear with me, I'm going to read. Um, their report states that big collaboration in the information ecosystem will come not only from broader collaboration across libraries, library groups, consortia, and partnerships across broader, broader knowledge communities, but also across researchers, publishers, commercial vendors, and web scale providers, such as Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, the famed GAFA. And there's a number of collaborative groups out there. Um, the Chicago Collaborative is just one example. Um, I think this event actually is a great example, um, seeing a, a really nice mix across the sectors this year, which is really exciting. So with that said, I'm going to continue this cross-sector collaboration and conversations and turn things over to my colleagues who are going to give you examples of what their organizations have done for successful discovery. Thank you.